ನಿತ್ಯಂದಂ ಪರಮಸುಖದ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ದ್ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತ ಗಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತತ್ವಸ್ಯಾಕಮಲಮಚಲ ಸರ್ವಧೀ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ಎಸ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ಸ್ ಎನ್ ಅನ್ ಕ್ಲಚಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನಿ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಾಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಐ ರೀಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶೇರ್ಡ್ ಕ್ಲಿಕ್ಸ್ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಕಾಗ್ನಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಐ ರಿಸೀವ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಮೋರ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರಿಟಿ ಮೋರ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರಮ ಶಿವೋಹಂ decide to unclutch not to follow any thoughts emotions triggering of mind and mental activities inside even laziness is a mental activity tiredness is mental activity feeling bored is mental activity do not follow any of that just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you the pure space again feel free to write questions in the comments in the chat i'll answer recently swamji has been talking about the importance of initiation importance of receiving initiation and how in the scriptures it mentions in the hindu scriptures it mentions that the moment you receive diksha the moment you receive initiation you are declared as a liberated being the only purpose for which we assume the human body is to receive initiation into moksha into liberation and it even goes further saying that even the path towards enlightenment is not even open unless you have received diksha unless you have received initiation so it's very simple initiation is very simple you just need to find guru and get initiated and then remain integrated to guru remain uh, cherish this simple attachment constantly remembering swamiji has initiated us into um the powerful cognition of paramashivoham i am paramashiva i wanted to share something recently i had a click regarding this because sometimes so for those who are not uh, fully aware of what paramashiva who paramashiva is and what paramashiva is paramashiva is uh, here the poster 25 heads with devi parashakti on his lap and swamiji was saying there are five actions that paramashiva performs paramashiva is not god god and the concept of god and the reality of paramashiva is different god only has creation sustenance and destruction but paramashiva has five there are two dimensions which we are not taught about um, especially in the west if you're not familiar to this uh, vedic tradition or um, hindu civilization So the first one is creation that is same sustenance is the second action third action is destruction and rejuvenation so depending on what the inner space that you have you will experience destruction or rejuvenation fourth one is delusion or pulling out of delusion again depending on the inner space that you cherish and the fifth one is liberation so this principle of delusion and liberation is not something you get necessarily uh, taught into and definitely not initiated into uh, in the abrahamic uh, traditions but in sanatana hindu dharma uh, it is very much 
uh, there in every tradition. So, Paramashiva is the source of everything. Paramashiva is also omnipresent, means he exists within everything. Swamji was sharing that Paramashiva is the only Purusha, he's the only man alive. Everything else is Prakriti, matter. So, the life in you, the aliveness in you is Paramashiva. Now this level of aliveness can manifest more or less depending on the lifestyle that you have and the cognitions that you cherish in your inner space and with which you relate to the world, to your reality. So the click I was having recently is that sometimes we use the thought current I am Paramashiva in an inauthentic way. Recently, a few days back, Swamji uh, introduced a new word, which is uh, pious fraud. So it is arrogance, which is a fraud, which is not has nothing to do with the powerfulness of Paramashiva. But it is very pious. It is very, uh, it looks very nice. So because it looks very nice, you don't ident identify it as arrogance. And because you don't identify it as arrogance, you don't discard it from your life. And Swamiji was saying that it is like, it's like a, a, an, an agent which sits inside of you, feeds off your own resources and destroys you. So one visual I got when Swamiji was sharing that was uh, in the Lord of the Ring. I, I think it's in the second one. You have the king of humans and uh, you have his uh, advisor and his advisor is, is pretty much a snake and he feeds off of the kingdom and the king but he destroys the king and, and has his own personal interests which, de which leads to the destruction of the kingdom. So in the same way I felt that, oh yeah, that's the pious fraud. That's how pious fraud operates. Uh, and even back long time back, Swamiji was sharing, he was talking about the, there are two types of arrogance. There's the straightforward arrogance, which is very upfront and very easily identifiable because it is pretty much in your face. And Swamiji says that type of arrogance is very easy to get rid of and to break. You just need to hit it two, three times on the head and that arrogance disappears, it breaks. But there is also a humble arrogance. And, uh, and that one is very difficult to identify because it is constantly bending, it is constantly escaping, shifting left and right, but it remains very much arrogant. So, so the click that I got is that sometimes when we use the thought current, I am Paramashiva, we use it to escape from life. See, Swamiji said, all of my teachings should be cognized from a life positive angle. They should not be cognized from a life negative angle. I am Paramashiva is, a, is the most powerful cognition. And using this cognition to escape from life is, is to totally not uh, authentic. And it's totally, it, it, is, it is really that space of pious fraud. Sometimes I had to share an example for instance, you want to go for a job, but for some reason you have tremendous fear and anxiety when it comes to uh, being interviewed, facing an interview. So the click I got was the pious fraud space will say, oh, I am Paramashiva, I don't need job, I am beyond everything. But that is totally cheating because you have the desire to manifest a job. But in front of the obstacle, some form of fear and anxiety is triggered in you. And in front of that fear and anxiety, you, you use the cognition I am Paramashiva to escape from engaging with the interview. So that I cognize as that's pious fraud. That's what Swamiji is saying, like we should not do. And that is totally in life negative also because you have manifested the desire to have a job. So naturally, you have to man you you should manifest it or you should drop the desire or you should manifest the desire so 
I am Paramashiva should be cognized that, oh, I am the source of everything. I exist within everything. I can never be hurt, damaged, whatever. I am beyond all forms of illusions and delusions. So from that angle, there's no need for me to be anxious or frightened. I should be confident, powerful, and go sit in the interview and manifest the job that I want to manifest. So that is not pious fraud. That is the space of Paramashivoham. You use the powerful cognition to conquer or to vanquish or to uh, make redundant all the forms of powerlessness that you experience in your day-to-day -day life. So uh, it's very... it's. We have to be constantly aware if we are established in a space of bias fraud or if we are established in a space of Paramashiva, in the space of Paramashiva, in the space of powerfulness. So we have to constantly, again, be aware. When we, when we use these powerful cognitions that Swamiji is teaching us, are we using them to help us manifest what we want? Or are we using them to escape from life? because we don't want to engage with life for whatever reason. So that we should be very uh, sincere with ourselves. We should re be very clear, very straightforward. We should not, uh, we should not cheat ourselves, uh, thinking something and behaving in another way. Another click I had was, see, we assume the human body and it is our own decision. We might have forgotten why we assumed it, because that is the process of taking human birth. But we decided to assume this body. So when we are in this body and we are operating at this frequency where the body is cognized and is experiencing through the five senses and all that, when we are in this space, then we should manifest the reality we want to manifest. We took the body because we wanted to fulfill something. We wanted to manifest something. So it is our responsibility and it is our integrity towards ourselves to manifest that. And when you receive initiation and you have Guru in your life, he creates the space and he gives you the cognitions you need in order to manifest what you came to manifest successfully and come back to a space of complete completion, a space of fulfillment so that is why guru is a blessing when guru happens in your life you have manifest it's a blessing so uh, paramashiva says in the agamas that he comes in the life of a sincere seeker in the form of guru swamji recently was sharing that guru is the manifested component of paramashiva paramashiva is the unmanifest component of guru so they're both one and the same. One is in the manifested existence and one is the, in the unmanifest existence. But they are extensions of each other. So we should not perceive any conflict between Guru and the ultimate Guru and Paramashiva. They are just extensions. So that is why the more and more you integrate yourself, the more and more you align to Guru, to the instructions that the Guru gave you, to the teachings and the cognitions, the initiations, most importantly, that Guru has given you. The more you align to that, the more you fall into that oneness. And the more you are into that oneness, the more you realize yourself. You, you gain a space of listening which allows you to get in touch with your true self, which we have forgotten because of the confusion and powerlessness that we are cherishing in our life, in our inner space. So that was a very powerful click. I wanted to share with all of you. Again, just reminding that these are uh, open sessions where uh, you can drop any question in the chat and I will read and share powerful clicks in cognition I got from Swamiji. Otherwise, you can also sit and uh, in the space of unclutching to build up this space of unclutching, especially during this time. Um, unclutching is the Direct is the ultimate technique to experience Paramashiva. It is the simplest and it directly leads you to the ultimate. And it helps to get rid of, to free yourself from tiredness, boredom, loneliness, depression, especially during this time with the COVID-19 uh, running around. 
uh, we should build that space for ourselves and go beyond all the forms of powerlessness. So again, if you have a question, drop it in the chat. And uh, otherwise, let's uh, quickly listen to a 40 second of introduction into unclutching by Swamiji. And then we'll do a little bit of unclutching. Decide to unclutch, not to follow any thoughts, emotions, triggering of mind and mental activities inside. Even laziness is a mental activity. Tiredness is mental activity. Feeling bored is mental activity. Do not follow any of that. Just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you. The pure space. Yes. So, this sit few moments. Not engaging with thoughts, not engaging with emotions, going beyond the mental activity, tuning in to your consciousness, to Paramashiva, to Swamiji. If you have any questions, please write it in the chat be glad to share clicks and powerful cognitions I got from Swamiji to help bring more clarity, remove doubts about any question which is sincere, sincere question. Not going to answer any, anything else. One of the main powerful cognition which Swamiji has shared with all of us is the truth of oneness. In the other traditions outside of the Sanatana Hindu Dharma, we are taught this idea of God is one and He is ultimate and that's it. But in Sanatana Hindu Dharma, again when we talk about Paramashiva, Swamiji says, Paramashiva is not one, he is oneness. And that's a very important, that, that was one of the, what the very important click I got, was like this enveloping everybody, taking into account everything and not separating things. Because when we separate things, we fall into this, we build this dualistic logic and then we get stuck in powerlessness. In the puja that we do on a daily basis, we declare at the beginning the, the, the truth of Sohamasmi, meaning even if I worship, I know, I, even if I worship you, I know that I am you. So Swamiji beautifully uh, described in sharing that when he does puja, he is not inferior to Paramashiva. He is not lesser than, he is not, uh, because in the West, uh, I mean, I'm saying the West because that's where I grew up, but in the traditions outside of Sanatana Hindu Dharma, there are various thought currents which we are introduced into, and some of them put you in intense powerlessness. For instance, the thought current of, you know, I'm a sinner and I need to repent. Uh, this idea of I'm a sinner is totally, it, it puts you in total powerlessness and it does not allow you to see the reality as it is. Whereas when you get initiated into the truth of uh, Paramashivoam and that Paramashiva is oneness, you are Paramashiva. Again, the examples I was talking about a little bit earlier, you are Paramashiva. And cognizing that, remembering that again and again and again, when we make decisions, when we do actions, when everything that we do, Constantly remembering and cognizing, I am Paramashiva, I am Paramashiva, so that you remain in a space of powerfulness all the time. So this principle of oneness is extremely important to cognize, to get out of the duality, 
because as long as what the click I got was like as long as we are in the duality it's always the predator and the prey the winner and the loser the that, that survival uh, component of reality we are not able to go beyond it see for animals to have this survival is fine because they don't have a body and a brain which allows them to cognize higher things the purpose for which they assume that body is for another reason but when you assume a human body you assume it because human body is the only body which allows you to experience and reach enlightenment to experience enlightenment to realize enlightenment so the purpose of the human body is enlightenment so as a human you have to go beyond the survival that the animal kingdom is stuck into experiences constantly uh, so that is why going beyond the duality is very important going beyond this idea that if you're powerful then i'm powerless if he's all if god is ultimate then i am not ultimate and it's like this this logic which happens automatically right if you say something is beautiful it means the other thing is not beautiful so it's like it's a it's a broken logic which does not allow us to experience our consciousness not allow us to experience our um our uh, space of paramashivoham so so that's a very important thing to constantly cognize Another thing very important to uh, remember is the surroundings and the important or the importance of having uh, an ecosystem. See, the main purpose of Swamiji's life is not only to share these cognitions, these powerful cognitions and initiations with all of us, but it is also to uh, revive the uh, enlightened ecosystem of Kailasa so he has done it and it is expanding continuously and the space you're in facilitates your success in the path of experiencing your consciousness your super consciousness as a solid experience see our body we have a solid experience of our body and that is why we are uh, the click i got is that that's why we're so attached to it is because of the solid experience we have about it but the truth is that the body is only a dimension of us it's only a part of us it's not the entire the, it's not who we are as an entire happening what we truly are is consciousness consciousness operating through a body but when we make decisions or actions, when we think, when we operate in life, we most of the time, uh, unless we get initiated and we start to actually actively, consciously cognize that we are consciousness, we never operate from the cognition, from the truth. It's not even, I mean, ultimately it's the truth and you should turn this truth into your cognition, but the truth that you are consciousness, that you are Paramashiva. And for that, when you are in an at atmosphere which is constantly reminding you, rem uh, helping you to remember about this truth of Paramashivoham, then you constantly make the conscious decision to align to, to that, align to that, align to that. And that makes the, the experience of consciousness uh, more and more solid for, for us. And the more the solid, the more the experience of consciousness is solid, the more we start to realize that uh, the powerfulness of the of the space of uh, Paramashiva of Paramashivoham, and with that powerfulness, we can manifest what we want in our life uh, faster and more accurately, and therefore experience the fulfillment that we seek. So, uh, so it's so important. The ecosystem you can check in the description below if you've never heard about this and all that uh, I've dropped some links about uh, kailasa.org for instance 
and uh, you can also receive the e-passport if you want to get updates of uh, the evolution of things in terms of uh, the nation, the greatest and only Hindu nation, which is Sri Kailasa. So that's an important thing I wanted to share because uh, sometimes we take for granted the uh, importance of the ecosystem in which we are. Also, Swamiji, being an incarnation, he came down for that purpose only. So not only he is initiating us, but he's uh, working to re-establish this nation uh, so that people in the world can access it and they can benefit from it. They have the freedom to live their spirituality authentically and as per the scriptures, uh, the Hindu scriptures, without having uh, the religious freedom basically to practice Hinduism as Hinduism is meant to be practiced. So it's very important. Um, it's a very important and very auspicious happening for everybody who is genuinely, sincerely interested in experiencing Hinduism, in experiencing that you are Paramashiva, in making that initiation of Paramashivoham into your reality, into your experience. Yes, and um, can you share on what is the inner image? Swamiji introduced the inner image as what we experience about us deep within, not how we engage with the world, how we project ourselves with the world and all that, but what is the true experience we have about us deep inside. One of the understanding I, I came, uh, came about by contemplating on this is that Actually, we are not aware of our inner image fully. And that's, the, that's why the, the spiritual, living the spiritual truth and spiritual practice is so important because we, have, we, because we are projecting ourselves in a certain way to people, which is most of the time not necessarily in tune with the experience we have about us deep within, we fall into this, this confusion and we no longer know what to believe. So Anji was sharing that See, if you feel like, um, if deep inside, sincerely, if you really look into the cognition you have about you inside, if you feel like, oh no, I, I don't know if I'll be able to do it, you have this kind of doubt and this kind of uh, space where you, you, don't, you don't think you're qualified enough or good enough in order to succeed. But to the world, when people, when you are in situations where you are challenged, you respond in a very... Uh, confident way you know you respond in a way that that inspires confidence into confidence into people then what Swamiji you're sharing is that not everybody is going to believe you but some people will believe you and when you will see that some people believe you you will start to feel that oh then if they are believing that then that might be true and then you will be in confusion because a part of you will feel that it is not true because that part of you will feel that in your inner space you are not, you don't have that confidence. But a part of you will feel like, oh, but if people believe that I'm confident, then that maybe means that I'm confident. And then you fall into this space where you, uh, where you get lost because you, you no longer, it's like you don't know in which di direction you're going, right? So you, you can, you're like stuck and, and you kind of just go round and round. But when you do spiritual practices and when you contemplate on the whatever powerful cognitions Swamiji talk about and when you live the Guru's instructions, the Guru Vak, um, it aligns you to, uh, to you because ultimately Guru is also, not only it is the, the manifestation of Paramashiva in the manifested existence, but it is also a reflection of your inner self. Guru is the pure reflection of your inner self. So when you relate to Guru, you get in touch with your inner self more and more. The more you relate to Guru, 
in an integrated manner, the more you get in touch with your inner self. And the more you get in touch with your inner self, the more you see your inner image. And when you see that there are some things in your inner image which are uh, not at all aligned to what your guru is, has initiated you into, then you can consciously decide to get rid of it. It's like Swamiji talks about, he, he, he gave the powerful cognition of oneness, but if, and that there's no such thing as you are lesser than God and God is above you and all that. So if inside of you, you feel inferior, you have an inferiority complex because you feel God is ultimate and you're I'm just human, right? Recently, uh, just I think today or yesterday, Sanji was talking about, oh no, I'm just human, I'm just human. And he was saying how that is uh, completely that pious fraud. Because Sanji says in the manifestation of Paramashiva, which is everything, because everything is only the manifestation of Paramashiva, there is nothing ordinary. So this thought current of like, oh no, I'm just ordinary human being, is just a powerless cognition, which we feel comfortable with because we use it to justify uh, not to expand in our life, not to engage with unknown dimensions of who we are, not to engage with unknown situations in life, not to engage with many things because we have some form of obviously fear and some derivative of that where anxiety or depression or whatever. And we are stuck there and we don't want to expand. And so we're just like, oh, no, I'm just ordinary human being. But Swamiji was saying, be very clear. There's no such thing as ordinary human being. You are a pious fraud or you're Paramashiva. So, um, so when you get in tune with your inner self, when you touch your inner image by uh, raising your integrity and raising yourself with the, in the relationship you have with your guru, then you start to see these, uh, these pious, fraudulent, cognition and then obviously once you see it you're like hey that's not true and then you discard them and like that you complete your inner image when the inner image becomes powerful when your inner image becomes i am paramashiva the complete powerfulness then automatically you will uh, respond to life also with that powerfulness and there won't be any gap between your inner image and your outer image there won't be any gap and when there's no gap then uh, then you're fulfilled and there's no confusion, there's no powerlessness. You manifest the reality that you want. But unless you have the complete complete unless you have the space of completion, there will be a gap in the way that you project yourself and the way that you experience yourself deep within. And in that gap, you will create conflicts, suffering, struggles for yourself. So our responsibility is to uh, live uh, constantly live more and more. The, 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 the cognitions, the initiations of the Guru so that we can bridge the gap between the inner image and outer image and, um, and, and, and restore the space of completion, come back to a space of fulfillment. Actually, the only thing we have to do in life is to bridge the gap between inner image and outer image. Because the, the gap between the inner image and outer image is responsible for any form of suffering that we have. And the inner image should be, uh, should be, the, should be the ultimate, should be, should be rooted in the ultimate. Actually, I had a huge click uh, yesterday. In the, in, the, in the scriptures, and especially in the in the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, there's a sloka that we chant during Maheshwara Puja. And that sloka starts by talking about a banyan tree, which is upside down, which means the roots are going upwards and branches are going downwards. And, and that is basically, it refers uh, vaguely, uh, I mean, as far as I remember, to, that's the whole universe and everything and the, the whole thing the the Vedas is basically this tree and I've, I've been wondering since then like why is it a, a banyan tree okay we know banyan tree because banyan tree is sacred and it has many roots and it, it's it's pretty much the highest frequency of or I mean 
in the highest frequency of trees, manifestation of trees available, and through which Paramashiva manifests. Uh, manifests. But, uh, but I was wondering, recently Swamiji mentioned it in a satsang actually. He mentioned that upside down tree, but he said that he will not expand on it right now because that's, that was not what he wanted to share with all of us. But he said that maybe, maybe in the future he will expand on that. And, um, and I had this click, I was like, I don't, we'll see when Swamiji reveals more about it, more clarity will be bestowed. But the click I got was like, there are 14 dimensions in the universe, 14 planes of existence. Each of these planes of existence have different types of manifestations, all kinds of manifestations, all obviously within the space of Paramashiva. Paramashiva pervades everything. The click I got is like the roots are upwards because the whole manifestation has to happen from the space of, it no, not has to happen, the whole manifestation is happening from the space of Paramashiva. Kailasa, which is the highest plane, is the highest plane. So the roots are in Kailasa, in the space of pure super consciousness, pure consciousness. So the, the life of the tree is Paramashiva. Like I shared earlier, Paramashiva is the only Purusha. He is the only life. Everything else is Prakriti. So the life of the tree has to be from Kailasa. So the roots have to go upwards because Kailasa is the highest plane. And when the, and the roots being rooted in Kailasa feed the tree, which is growing in all directions below and below and below. So the different other planes of existence. And this tree, they say in that sloka, the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, that this tree is not uh, cognizable. We cannot see it just like that. And only a liberated being can actually uh, experience that tree. But uh, that was one of the click I got. I'm, I'm actually waiting for Swamiji to share more about it because that is something that has really uh, triggered a lot of seeking and interest within me. But uh, one thing is sure is that Paramashiva is the source of everything. And manifestations may be plentiful. And there's no limit to what is going to manifest and how it is manifesting. The universe is constantly expanding. Not only it is expanding, it is accelerating also. So the universe is endless. It has no beginning, no end, and it just it's just a constant, intense expansion. But the source of all this is Paramashiva. So when we when we touch our inner space, we need to realize that we are Paramashiva, that the life, the source. And the life that we have, which allows everything else to happen, is Paramashiva. And when we are fully in tune with that, the click that I got was that when you're fully in tune with that, then you are liberated and you are constantly in the space of Paramashiva, radiating life, 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 more and more life. 